Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Dozens gathering at a local park honoring the missing toddler James Chires. We have the details and the latest on the case. This morning, Crime Stoppers needs your help in identifying two women that ran off with a suspect after he shot someone. The details just ahead here on GMSA. Let's take a look outside with live cam 70 degrees as we start our Saturday morning. Sarah Spivey will have our full weekend forecast in just a bit. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Saturday, May 8th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It has been perfect the last couple days. How have you been celebrating? Uh, I, I've been taking long walks. I worked in the garden. It just felt like euphoric almost yesterday. I know it was still a little hot, mm. but it didn't feel, was it not that low humid? Humidity. Sarah, yeah, is that what it humidity. was? That's exactly what. The last couple of days we've had very low humidity. In fact, I got to go to the pool. Ooh, look at you. And I checked the temperature <laughs> and it was, look at you. <laughs> and I checked the temperature, it was like 87, 88 degrees, but it didn't feel like it because the humidity was so low. Guys, guess what? It's over. Down or here? It's over. No. Here, we've already <laughs> seen the humidity work its way back into South Central Texas. And as a result, we're starting off a little bit warmer than the last couple of mornings. Last couple of mornings, we were in the 50s. Today, we're hovering near 70 degrees at the airport. 78 Canyon Lake, 69 in New Braunfels, 71 in Lotus, 65 in Kerrville, and 66 in Comfort. Now, even though it is a little bit more muggy outside, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to enjoy some time outdoors this Mother's Day weekend. In fact, here's a look at the weekend forecast. Muggy and breezy today with gradually clearing skies. We're starting off cloudy, but in the afternoon we will be close to 90 degrees. And tomorrow for Mother's Day itself, a humid day. No doubt we're going to have high humidity, high heat index values, a high temperature of 93, but we'll still be able to see plenty of sun and it shouldn't be too bad in the shade. There is a chance for a stray storm tomorrow, so coming up in the forecast, I'll walk you through uh, tomorrow's small rain chance, but much better rain chances into the middle of next week. Sarah Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, investigators asking for the public's help searching for two women linked to an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The crime happened about 10 days ago at a gas station in the medical center area. Alicia Beretta is live downtown with what we know from police. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, investigators say that the women that you're about to see on your screen didn't pull the trigger, but they were seen talking to the suspect that did. So take a very close look at your screen. These are the two women that Crime Stopper investigators are on the look for. They were seen at the Valero gas station on the 8600 block of Humor Road between Eggert and Babcock Road on Wednesday, April 28th. According to Crime Stoppers, these two women were witnesses or know exactly who the suspect is. The suspect of the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon was seen talking to these two women before he shot a victim in the leg while at the gas pump and then running up to meet with the women. All three were later seen running across the street to a nearby apartment complex. The women were seen wearing black sweatshirts or jacket with a hood and their hair pulled back. So if you recognize these women, know about their whereabouts, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers directly. If your information leads to arrest, as always, you could receive up to a $5,000 reward. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. A community coming together, a vigil for missing toddler James Chires held last night. All of this coming after remains were found at a West Side mobile home park that his mother used to call home. Important to mention, an identity of those remains still not yet released. Family and friends gathering at a park near Castle Ridge and Pin Road for a chance to remember baby James. Some of the event still holding on to hope that the remains found last week may not be baby James. It was last seen in January. His mother, Delaney Chires, arrested on suspicion of abandoning or endangering a child. A grand jury later returned an indictment on charges of tampering with evidence, a third degree felony. Turning now to the coronavirus numbers here in Bear County, city health officials report 113 new COVID-19 cases here at home. Two more people have died from the virus. 220 COVID-19 patients are in our local hospitals. 73 are in the ICU and 41 are in ventilators. Well, in your morning headlines, new federal charges filed in the death of George Floyd. These charges against four former Minneapolis police officers now accused of violating Floyd's civil rights. 
These new charges coming just a little more than two weeks after Derek Chauvin was found guilty of murdering George Floyd on state charges. CNN's Meredith Wood has a story. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin now facing new federal charges in George Floyd's death. The indictment accusing Chauvin of depriving Floyd of the right to be free from unreasonable seizure, which includes unreasonable use of force. We don't want to see another uh, a person get murdered the same way that George Floyd lost his life. Three other former officers that were on the scene of the detention of Floyd are now also facing federal charges on top of their state charges. Two of the officers accused of not intervening to stop Chauvin's use of force, and all four are charged with not giving Floyd medical aid. Floyd family attorneys responding to the indictments in a statement saying, quote, we are encouraged by these charges and eager to see continued justice in this historic case. Derek Chauvin is also facing new federal charges with civil rights violations in a 2017 incident against a 14-year-old. The newly unsealed indictment alleging Chauvin held the teen by the throat, striking them in the head multiple times with a flashlight. In that case, Chauvin allegedly also put his knee on the teenager's neck and upper back even after he was lying prone, handcuffed and not resisting. The White House says the new indictments are a reminder of the need for police reform. Uh, it's a reminder of the need to put police reform in place uh, through our legislative process and put those reforms in place across the country. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. Chauvin's attorney Eric Nelson declined to comment, as did Thomas Plunkett, an attorney representing former former officer J. Alexander King. Derek Chauvin remains in jail awaiting his sentencing for his state charges in connection to Floyd's death. The three other officers are scheduled to go to trial together this summer. All three have pleaded not guilty to those charges. Now to politics, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik of New York poised to replace Congresswoman Liz Cheney as the number three ranking House Republican. House Republicans plan to remove Cheney from GOP leadership as soon as Wednesday after she called out former President Donald Trump for his lies about the 2020 election. Reports show that Stefanik has signaled that she plans to stay in leadership and as the chair of the House GOP conference only for this Congress and next Congress. Stefanik wants to pursue the top GOP job on the House Education and Labor Committee. The U.S. Justice Department proposing a new regulation on firearm definitions that would target weapons known as ghost guns. Ghost guns can be made with unregulated kits, parts, or 3D printers and are sold without identifying marks. The DOJ's proposed rule will reclassify the definition of a firearm and would make it easier for law enforcement to trace unmarked guns used to commit violent crimes. And the White House releases the first portion of visitor logs, naming 400 people who have already visited the White House between noon on Inauguration Day and January 31st. This is a move that is pretty much reversed from the former White House. Now, the Trump administration actually refused to release visitor logs, citing national security risks and privacy concerns. Now, this White House says the decision makes good on President Biden's commitment to restore integrity, transparency and trust in government. Time now is 6.08, 70 degrees out. What day is it today, Max? It is Saturday. What does that mean, Sarah? It's Texas Eats. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a preview of where David Elder will take Ooh. us today. Looks that's good. That's ahead. Is that a Reuben? I don't know. Oh, it's delicious. Breakfast champions. All right. Well, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in a bit. But we also need to tell you, if it's going to be hot this weekend, good news if you're looking for a pool. San Antonio opened up public pools for you to swim in. We're going to explain next. 70 degrees at 608 this morning. Sarah Spivey did say that we will have a little more humidity this weekend, but she'll give us our full forecast when we come back. Well, Mother's Day should be every day of the year, and we know you appreciate your mom and all that she has done for you throughout your life. All right, so just in case she's watching, happy Mother's Day weekend to my mom. And my to mom, all, too. To all the great moms <laughs> out there. So if you haven't gotten a gift yet, shame on you. You still have 24 hours though, so here are some simple ideas to make the day a little better and celebrate in the right way. So if she is a sports fan, a movie buff, a book lover, you can create a handcrafted gift basket 
personally designed for her taste. Are you going to do that? No, I already got my Okay. Out. I'm not messing around here. <laughs> She's into jewelry. Try investing in a piece of mother-daughter jewelry oh. you both can carry with you, or mother-son jewelry in Max's case. Mm, that wouldn't fly in my mouth. <laughs> if you're on a tight budget, you can customize a photo album of all of your favorite photos. That's awesome. We have a lot more ideas on Mother's Day gifts right now. Just head to ksat.com. I've done the gift basket a many times. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, also happening this weekend, the city is opening up six outdoor pools starting today. The pools at Woodlawn, Southside Lions, Heritage and Lady Bird Johnson will be open Saturdays and Sundays from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. They will also be open Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from 8, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Hmm. And the San Pedro Springs, the JFK pools all open on Saturdays and Sundays, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. In order to limit capacity, pre-registration is required and then we got some splash pads, the one at the Pearl, Gustav's Geysers, that's going to be open daily from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I don't know what's going on on the screen right now. We're going to have a full list. There we go. Full list of the protocols. Just head to ksat.com. Sarah Spivey, a good day to head out to the splash pad. Great day to there head out there. I, I love I love this pools. splash pad. Uh, yeah. Who doesn't love this? Or the one pad. Um, at the Tower Americas. Yes, Park. that one's great too. Yeah. The one at the Pearl's been closed for quite some time, mm -hmm. but it is open again. Uh, so I bet the Pearl's going to be popping. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at your poolside forecast today. Why not? You know what? If you want to enjoy some time out by the pool, it's going to be great this afternoon for that. Uh, now, it is fairly cloudy right now, but we'll be seeing clearing skies and a high temperature near 90 degrees. A little breezy, too, with south winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Outside right now, noticeably warmer than the last couple of mornings. We are waking up to near 70 degrees at the airport, 70 at JBSA Randolph, 67 at Rio Medina. Last couple of mornings when we've been able to enjoy temperatures in the 50s, a nice cool start uh, yesterday and the day before, but not the case in Kerrville where it's 65 degrees, 69 in New Braunfels and 68 in Seguin. We've got those clouds out there right now, but by about noon, we'll be quickly seeing skies clear. That's going to allow our temperatures to shoot up, and in fact, it's going to be pretty warm this afternoon. Now into the afternoon hours, there could be a couple of showers off of the Sierra Madres there just to the west of Del Rio but they're just not going to have enough oomph to make it to us. So it'll be a dry day and a warm one. High temperatures out to the west, very warm. 96 in Del Rio, 97 Carrizo Springs, 97 in Catula. High temperatures along that I-35 corridor right near 90 degrees. And in the hill country, the upper 80s are expected. But... Humidity is going to be high today. Dew points are already in the 60s, which is noticeably muggy. And so you can add a couple of degrees to the forecast high temperature. That's what it's going to feel like outside with the heat index. And we're going to keep the humidity coming. Winds today are going to be from the south. They're currently from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. But during the daytime, we're going to really see those pick up. And in fact, we'll see a few gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. So just to reiterate, at 10 this morning, it's still going to be muggy and cloudy, but around noon, that's when the skies are going to open up and clear totally 81 at noon, 89 for that high temperature in San Antonio. But again, tack on a couple extra degrees for the humidity. And then in the evening, it'll be mild and breezy. In fact, after midnight, our wind gusts could gust up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. So if you have any loose patio furniture or anything that might get blown away by the wind, might be a good idea to bring it in. Now let's go ahead and talk about this uh, upcoming week. Now this is right at midnight, we're going to have a cool front and a dry line that are going to be interacting and trying to bring us uh, some rain during the first part of the week here. But let's go ahead and take a look at tomorrow morning by sunrise Mother's Day. It'll be cloudy. There could even be a couple of isolated streamer showers, but not really amounting to much. We'll start off the day tomorrow at 73 degrees. And then in the afternoon, there is a small 10% chance for a stray storm. It's unlikely to see a storm, but we could see a storm. A high temperature in the low 90s. We'll keep you informed there, but go ahead and plan your Mother's Day as if you can't. We're not going to see any rain and just have the case that weather authority app handy with you just in case that 10% chance comes to fruition. Looking ahead though, that front is going to sag south and bring us a good chance for some storms starting on Monday night, lasting throughout the day on 
Tuesday and lingering into Wednesday as well. There could be some heavy rain with this and because of the time of year, we are going to be monitoring for the potential for some severe weather Monday afternoon through Wednesday. We'll keep you informed, but that front on Tuesday is really going to allow for us to see our temperatures cool down quite a bit. We're going to be toasty until Monday afternoon, but with that front moving through, our temperatures will fall in the 70s, but that's because there'll be plenty of rain in the area and clouds as well. Uh, an additional up to one to two inches of rain will be possible in some places, so we'll keep an eye on things for you. By about Thursday and Friday, though, we dry out nicely. More rain. It's more like we're having May showers than April showers. <laughs> We need it. We'll take it. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 617, 70 degrees out. Well, still ahead, nearly a quarter of a million smoke alarms are being recalled in our next half hour. What you need to do if you have one of these alarms. And it's Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats and we are talking sandwiches. David Elder is going to give us a preview next. Well, it's Saturday, and that means... Texas Eats! <laughs> right here. There you go. Yeah, all right. So, David Elder, talking with the chef at the Hayden, one of the newer spots in San Antonio, and they are talking about one of my favorite things, their house-made pastrami and Swiss sandwich. Take a look. We're inside the kitchen, and we're being joined by executive chef Matthew Poussin, and you're going to be showing us how to make the pastrami and Swiss sandwich that we have on the menu out here. This is definitely our showcase item. Well, we're going to start with our rye bread. We'll get our pastrami. We go through six briskets a day. Oh, this is our house-made sauerkraut. Yeah, yeah. I'm super excited, man. This looks absolutely delicious, y'all. There's a lot more stuff on the menu that you're gonna be cooking up. I mean, we gotta try it all. Oh yeah. We gotta try everything. Joining me now is Adam Lampenstein. He's the owner operator out here at the Hayden. We have a big spread of food in front of us. I mean, this is a lot of food. The Texas diner, that's what we call it. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. And uh, right in front of me right here, we just saw it get made in the kitchen. This is the pastrami Swiss sandwich. You got the potato salad on the side. Like, I take a bite out of this. I mean, toasted on the outside, gooey in the middle right there, the sauerkraut. This is where it's at. Oh my God, that just looks amazing. And if you didn't know, David Elder is doing a big giveaway right now. If you are tired of being at home and you want to travel, he's got you covered. Wow, all right, so you can win an all-inclusive trip to Cancun for two. For all this information on how to participate, just visit David Elder's Instagram, at Elder Eats, and good luck out there. I mean, I want the trip to Cancun. I don't think really we're allowed. We're definitely we're allowed. not allowed there. We're not allowed to enter. <laughs> Start it. But we can go to the Hayden. I'm going to get a sandwich. 70 degrees out. Can you reiterate the voice you made? No. All right. A boy <laughs> decides to order three grand worth of SpongeBob popsicles. You do you, boo boo. All right. That happened on Amazon without mom's permission. We'll tell you what he decided to do with them. That's next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. So I'm sure we've all used Amazon, and we all acknowledge how easy it is for people to find out just about anything you want to buy, anything that your heart desires. And for four-year-old Noah Bryant, his heart desired 900 SpongeBob popsicles. So this little boy placed an order for nearly $3,000 worth of SpongeBob square pants, frozen treats. Mom, she was not happy since they were non-refundable. I don't think you could... Ever. He looks pretty happy there. <laughs> I'd be ecstatic if I were him. So a family friend actually stepped in, came to the rescue, started a GoFundMe campaign, eh, try to help out Noah's splurge, and it actually worked out. So the campaign raised nearly six grand in donations. Wow. The extra funds will help with Noah's schooling since he needs special education due to autism. But he, like, I hope, I don't know what they did with all of them. Maybe like, uh, you know, handed them, them out to the class. You, you got 900 <laughs> popsicles, so everyone can enjoy. Well, I've had those SpongeBob popsicles. They're actually pretty delicious. So mm. I'm, I'm there with you, Noah. There you go. I'm more of a Choco Taco guy, but mm. I, I can do so. Too. All right. <laughs> 627, 70 degrees out. Our next half hour, we hear the story of Central Catholic High School senior Noah Adams and how he took a negative thing and turned it into something positive. That's still ahead in our great graduate segment. And one third of the United States population now vaccinated, but this week the country's vaccination rate fell to two million shots a day. Next on GMSA, how states are pushing to get more vaccines out there. 
Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend at 631 this morning, Saturday, May 8th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Our weekends are Thursday, Friday, usually. Yeah, you had a very eventful weekend. I did. I went to go see my Nana in Austin. She's 89 years old. Elva Costa shout out shout out um, and she is. It was good. I hadn't seen her in a year and a half because of the pandemic. We're both fully vaccinated. I mean, it was emotional. It was, so, but it was so, so heartwarming because I mean, she's 89 right. and it was so special. I was able to have, you know, that afternoon with her. It was really nice. And it was, and it was a pretty one, Sarah Spivey. We yeah. spent time outside. Great weather for you guys. Yeah, we had low humidity over the last couple of days, but unfortunately the mugginess is back, but it shouldn't keep you from enjoying a nice Mother's Day weekend outdoors. It's 70 degrees outside right now, 69 in New Braunfels, 68 in Hondo, 65 in Kerrville. Little perspective, we spent the last couple of mornings in the 50s, so warmer because of the higher humidity. Dew points are uh, currently in the 60s. We're getting a good wind from the south southeast, tapping into that Gulf of Mexico moisture, and that's why we're going to have a higher humidity weekend this weekend. That means heat index values in the afternoons. Now it is cloudy outside right now, but in the forecast today, we're going to quickly see those skies clear. Even by noon, we'll be looking at partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. 89 for the high temperature, so definitely a warm one. Breezy south winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts up to 25 possible. Sun will set tonight at 815. Uh, and we're going to have a pretty nice day tomorrow as well for for Mother's Day. A quick check of trans guide and you can see that things are flowing smoothly if you have early morning plans to get out on the road. But as your traffic authority Samuel King is going to explain, there are some closures on the roads this weekend. Well, first we'll start with some good news on the north side. The intersection of 281 and Stone Oak Parkway is set to reopen Saturday evening after all that construction up there. And the good news is drivers will be able to cross uh, down Stone Oak Parkway using uh, the frontage road, something you're not able to do right now. Those main lanes, as you know, have a reopen north of Stone Oak Parkway, and that's been a real benefit for drivers. But a lot of people have been asking about these ramps here at 1604 and 281. Those are still still under construction. TxDOT says it's going to be a few more weeks yet, but just wait a little bit longer on that and those will be ready to go. Speaking of 1604, we do have some construction there this week too. some alternating lane closures between Stone Oak Parkway and 281 this weekend. They are doing some paving work and the construction continues on the west side in Loop 410 between Calabra and Marbach. For instance, some alternating lane closures as they do some work out there. Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, investigators asking for your help. Crime Stoppers releasing the photo of two women linked to an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The crime was reported about 10 days ago at a gas station in the medical center area, but no arrests have been made. Our Alicia Bedetta is live downtown with details from police. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, we know that one victim was shot in the leg, but the thing is that these women that Crime Stoppers are looking for right now, they say that they didn't pull the trigger, but they sure do know the suspect who did. So take a very close look at your screen in case you recognize any of these two women. The two, men, well, two women were seen at the Valero gas station on the 8600 block of Hubner Road. That's between Eckert and Babcock. That happened on Wednesday, April 28th. The women were seen wearing black sweatshirts or a jacket with a hood, their hair pulled back. But here's what happened. The male suspect of the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon was seen talking to these two women at the gas at the moments before he shot a victim in the leg while at the gas pump. After pulling the trigger, the suspect ran off to once again meet up with the women. All three ran across the street to a nearby to a nearby apartment complex. So if you have any information, remember that if you call directly to Crime Stoppers, that's 210-224-STOP, it could lead to cash in your top, in your pocket. So we're talking about up to $5,000 of a cash reward. Again, if you provide any information that leads to the arrest or information of these two women. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the latest, a Dallas man facing a human smuggling charge for his alleged involvement with the 41 people found in the back of a semi truck earlier on Thursday. 49 year old Aaron Griffin telling investigators he was paid to pick people up from Laredo, drive them to San Antonio. Police stopped the truck when that he was driving when they got several tips about a hand sticking out of the back of it. 
41 people found in the back of that truck. Those in the trucking industry say there are tough laws in place to discourage drivers from getting involved in human trafficking. They also say, in general, truckers are a good tool to help spot criminal activity across the highways. Truckers are very intuitive. You know, they, they, they spend their time on the highways, they pay attention to things, and, and they do it so frequently. If something isn't right, there's a good chance that it isn't. It doesn't hurt to make a phone call. And with summer right around the corner, they want drivers and those on the roads to pay attention to any suspicious activity. You see something, say something. Well, while some migrants are smuggled across the border, not all make their way into the U.S. the same way. We saw a rise in unaccompanied children seeking help at the border earlier this year. Thousands transported to facilities across the U.S., including right here in San Antonio. Now, the contract for the Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall facility is set to end on May 30th, but it could wrap up much sooner. Health and Human Services says, quote, we anticipate that a majority of teens here will be unified with their sponsor before the end of May. If, however, there are teens who have not been unified with their sponsor when it's time to close, they will be relocated to another facility in the Office of Refugee Resettlements Network, end quote. Out of the latest in the pandemic, a new push this morning to get more Americans vaccinated, and this comes after the nation's vaccination rate dropped to 2 million shots a day. That's a 20% decrease from just a week before. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. I have a challenge to D.C. residents. Officials resorting to different methods to encourage vaccinations. In D.C., free temporary tattoos that say vaxxed for mom and dad ahead of Mother's Day. The CDC's director using the holiday to advocate for vaccines, too. I rest easy knowing my family will be safe, and that is simply the best Mother's Day gift I could get this year. This mobile vaccination clinic opening in Maine, the hope to reach more unvaccinated people. And in Phoenix, city officials offering a $75,000 bonus to city workers who get vaccinated. Dr. Rochelle Walensky saying she expects Pfizer to get FDA authorization for vaccinating 12 to 15 year olds next week. Pfizer now planning to seek full approval from the FDA for its COVID-19 vaccine. Right now, the vaccine is being being distributed under an emergency use authorization, which is a different regulatory status. There are more signs of things gradually returning to normal. The Grand Ole Opry in Nashville opening to full capacity next week. And in Chicago's United Center, now welcoming fans back to the stands for the Bulls and Blackhawks game, up to 25 percent capacity. Getting everyone back together. The Madhouse on Madison is always good to be there in person, whether you're watching the Bulls or the Blackhawks. And there is potentially hope for future herd immunity in some places like California, once a hot spot of the pandemic in the U.S. We never wanted to get to herd immunity with a combination of natural infection and, and vaccination, but that's what um, California went through. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, in a home fire, can your family safely escape in just two minutes? Well, installing smoke alarms in your home can reduce your chances of dying in a house fire by half. That's why today the American Red Cross serving Central and South Texas, in partnership with the San Antonio Fire Department, will install free smoke alarms in San Antonio. It's happening from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. To schedule your appointment, just head to ksacommunity.com. Time now is 640, 70 degrees out. And speaking of smoke alarms, nearly a quarter of a million smoke alarms are being recalled. Still ahead, what you need to know if you have one of these. And next on GMSA, the story of Central Catholic High senior Noah Adams, his determination, tenacity, pushing through unimaginable adversities. We're going to explain next. 70 degrees at 640 this morning. The sun slowly starting to peek its way through the clouds there. Sarah Spivey will have our Mother's Day weekend forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. For so many, it can be hard to turn a negative into a positive. But for Central Catholic High School senior Noah Adams, he did just that. He did not let his cancer diagnosis slow him down. That's right. Ursula Perry introduces us to today's great graduate who is not only inspiration to faculty and students, but to the city of San Antonio. 
It started as a skateboarding injury last year. Then a doctor's visit turned it into something Noah Adams and his family never imagined. When I was diagnosed with cancer, for the first two seconds, I felt all those negative feelings, all like the dread and the worry and anxiety. And then two seconds later, it all just left and, you know, lifted out of me, I, I guess. Ever since his diagnosis, Noah has continued to stay positive. But Noah's mom struggled with the news. She says he continues to be her motivation. It was just, you know, hopelessness because, you know, we're supposed to be able to fix everything for our kids, you know, and... Um, take away all the pain as much as we can. And I couldn't do any of that. And in fact, he kept me going. As a way to show support, Noah's friends started the movement, hashtag Noah Strong. That was honestly more overwhelming than telling, than hearing I had cancer. Mm -hmm. It was, because I didn't know I had affected that many people, like in a positive way to. But faculty members at Central Catholic High School say Noah's impact goes beyond his classmates. Well, he's made a tremendous impact. I think on the city of San Antonio, not just our campus. His understanding of that, that life can throw you difficulties, but that doesn't have to make life difficult. Between attending chemotherapy, a life-changing surgery in October, his senior years look different from others. It was essentially a below-the-knee amputation, and, you know, learning to deal with that and um, new lifestyle with that was a big learning curve. But Noah did not let that new normal get in his way. Uh, I have no words to describe his, his strength and his resilience. Instead, he's continued to inspire others. Heck, he inspires me. He's one of my heroes. I want to be like Noah. In the fall, Noah plans on attending the University of Pittsburgh and studying pre-med. His goal is to help those in the military, particularly those with PTSD, or perhaps become a child psychiatrist. He says he credits his teachers for inspiring a passion in him. For great grads, Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. That was a great. Amazing. Ugh. Such yeah. an inspiration. Way to go, Noah. What an inspiration. Yeah, Noah and Central Catholic right across the street there. Well, today we are going to see humidity return. It's already returned, and you can actually see the clouds out there this morning. Overcast skies to begin our day, but... If you're itching to see the sun again, you won't have to wait too long. We'll see the sun by about probably mid morning here at the airport. We're reading currently mostly cloudy skies, a few peaks of clearer skies within that cloud deck. It's 70 degrees outside. Dew point is high 65 humidity at 84 percent and a south southeast wind at 10 miles per hour already about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than how we started off the day yesterday and throughout the weekend here the humidity is going to stay pretty high dew points will be muggy today but by tomorrow morning and into the afternoon tomorrow we'll be seeing dew points hover near 70 degrees that is just oppressively humid and you're definitely going to feel the humidity out there so not great hair days for the moms this weekend for mother's day just because of the high humidity but still it's going to be nice to enjoy some time outdoors if you can deal with the the warmer and the more humid weather, which being around San Antonio, we are used to that. 66 degrees in Seguin, 70 in Canyon Lake, 67 at Rio Medina, waking up at 66 in Bandera and 65 in Kerrville, 68 degrees out in Uvalde. Again, as I mentioned, cloudy skies right now, but watch what happens as we head into the middle of the morning and into the early afternoon. Poof. Those clouds just disappear and we're going to be looking at sunshine in the afternoon, not only here in San Antonio, but across the entire KSAT 12 viewing area. One thing to note is if you live out toward Del Rio Eagle Pass, if you look to the west this afternoon, you may see some showers uh, off of the Sierra Madres there, uh, but those will not, just not have enough to make it to us uh, around San Antonio. So that high humidity is going to factor into a heat index this afternoon too. It'll feel like it's close to 100 out toward uh, Carrizo Springs, Catula and Lorraine here in San Antonio feeling like the low 90s this afternoon even though thermometer is probably just going to get up to the upper 80s in many spots so 76 and cloudy today at 10 but quickly here by noon we'll be seeing partly cloudy skies 81 degrees 85 by 2 89 for that afternoon high sunsets at 8 15 tonight it's going to be breezy today too winds are from the south at 10 to 20 we'll see gusts up to 25 miles per hour and past midnight we can see wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and take you through the forecast for tomorrow, a Mother's Day and the week ahead. 
For the start of the day tomorrow morning, we are going to have a couple of isolated streamer showers and it'll be cloudy 73, but much like today, skies will quickly clear in the afternoon 93 for the high temperature tomorrow. Because we have a cool front and a dry line to our west, there is a small only 10% chance for an isolated thunderstorm tomorrow. But we'll keep you informed. Go ahead and enjoy your Mother's Day outdoors if you have plans and keep the KSAT Weather Authority app handy. Then a cool front is going to sag close to San Antonio from Monday night through Tuesday. That's going to keep rain chances, higher rain chances in our forecast from Monday in the late afternoon through the day on Tuesday, especially on Tuesday as that front stalls to our south. And a couple of showers will linger into Wednesday. When all is said and done, there could be some pockets of one to two inches of rain rain, additional rainfall from last week's rain. And so just to keep that in mind, heavy rain is possible, which could lead to the potential for some flooding Monday afternoon through Wednesday. And on top of that, because of the time of year, we are going to be on the lookout for some strong to severe storms as well. Monday afternoon, Tuesday and a little bit into Wednesday, but temperatures take a dive behind that front. We'll only be looking at highs in the 70s and 80s by the middle to the end of the week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 650, 70 degrees out. Well, thousands of zip up sleeping bags sold at TJ Maxx and Marshall stores are recalled due to suffocation. Also talking about recalls and those smoke alarms, our Marilyn Moritz has a roundup of what you need to be aware of. Safety alert, Kid A is recalling 226,000 smoke alarms and combo smoke carbon monoxide alarms. The reason? They can fail to alert people to a fire. The recall includes seven models of True Sense alarms. They were sold at Walmart, Home Depot, and other stores from May 2019 through last September. Contact Kid A for a free replacement. Stop using these adult portable bed rails. That warning from the Consumer Product Safety Commission after four elderly people died when they became trapped. This involves three models from Bed Handles Inc. Now out of business, so users are urged to just dispose of the rails. Parent alert, Colecraft is urging parents to immediately stop using the incline sleeper accessory sold with the cuddle and care bassinet. The move is to prevent suffocations, which have been linked to other manufacturers' incline sleep products. Colecraft is offering refunds. And these are not safe for infants either. Thousands of zip-up sleep bags sold at TJ Maxx and Marshall stores are recalled. The neck opening is too big, posing a suffocation danger. These were sold under several brand names and styles. Parents, you can contact the company and get your money back. For model numbers or company contact information, head to our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 6.55, 70 degrees out. We'll be right back. Well, temperatures are near 70 degrees this morning. You know, we're going to be muggy all day long, but at least we're going to see some sun after these morning clouds. By noon, skies will be clearing. It'll be warm and muggy near 89 degrees for the high temperature. We'll have wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow, Mother's Day looks pretty good. We're going to start off at 73, top off at 93. It is going to be pretty humid with the heat index value in the upper 90s tomorrow. So we do have to deal with that in a small 10% chance for for a stray storm. Of course, we'll keep you updated, but much better rain chances from late Monday afternoon all the way through Wednesday, especially on Tuesday. We'll have areas of scattered showers and storms, potentially some heavy rain there, as well as the small potential for uh, some uh, severe, stronger severe storms. So a lot going on during the first part of the week. The best way to stay up to date is our KSAT Weather Authority app. By the way, on Tuesday, meteorologist Katie Blake and I are going going to do a KSAT Explains episode where we talk all about hail, why we have large hail in this part of Texas, and uh, hail safety as we're in the middle of severe weather season. Did I love you guys, uh, were you guys affected by any of the hail from this past week? Oh, we got tennis ball sized hail at my place, but thankfully yeah. no damage on our cars or anything like that. Yeah, same. Uh, it's quarter, but every cars were put in. We were good. So coming up in our eight o'clock hour, uh, Alicia Bodetta is going to be mm -hmm. live at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. They have a new exhibit about Frida Kahlo and her garden, and it's going to be beautiful. So you're going to want to tune in. All right, we're going to take an hour long break. We'll see you back here at a.m.
from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on Good Morning San Antonio at 8 a.m., one man in custody, another in the hospital after an argument led to a shooting. We have the latest details. Plus a search for two women who police say may know a shooting suspect. We have the details just ahead. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 70 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What does Mother's Day weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, May 8th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. You've had an eventful couple of days. I did. I went and saw my Nana, who is my grandmother. She's 89 years old in Austin. It was so good to see her after a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Both are fully, both of us are fully vaccinated. Got to start off Mother's Day weekend, right? I did. I'm sorry, Mom, I can't see you in Corpus, but happy early Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And, right. and Sarah, it's going to be a nice Mother's Day weekend. I like how you say question mark. Questionable. <laughs> Uh, it is. It is going to be a pretty nice Mother's Day weekend. Now, it is going to be noticeably more humid outside. And if you've already started your day uh, by taking a quick trip outdoors, you know what I'm talking about. You can feel the mugginess in the air. Let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures out there. 71 to start the day here in San Antonio. Uh, and we have started the last couple of mornings in the 50s, so we're definitely warmer than the last couple of mornings. 71 in the Lotus, 68 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 68 in Comfort, 66 in Kerrville, 68 in again the wake up temperature out in Guadalupe County and it's 73 already down in Pleasanton. Now we are humid. Those dew points have risen quite a bit. Dew points are in the 60s, even a 70 degree dew point in at JBSA Randolph, which is pretty high on our scale. And you'll notice that humidity today. In fact, in the afternoon, we'll even have heat index values. Even though it's cloudy outside right now, we are going to see the sun. So this is going to be a good day to maybe head to the pool. A lot of the local area pools are reopening and we have that less on ksat.com. If you decide to go to the pool today, it's going to be warm and sunny in the afternoon. 89 degrees for the high, but feeling a little bit warmer because of the higher humidity. South winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And for the rest of this weekend, Mother's Day tomorrow, another humid and warm day. Generally, we should see the rain stay away until about the middle of next week. And so I've got to look ahead at those rain chances and which areas have the best chance to see rain coming up in a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, an argument between two men ends in a shooting, and now one person is in the hospital, the other in police custody. Police say it happened around 1030 last night in the parking lot of the Mediterranean Villa Apartments. That's in the 1500 block of Jackson Keller. We are told that two men were fighting after one of them accused the other of vandalizing his vehicle. The accused person denied the accusation, then pulled out a gun and shot the other. The victim was shot in the arm and found in front of a home on Antler Drive. He was taken to University Hospital in stable condition. The suspect was arrested and is now facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. San Antonio police asking for your help finding two women who they say may have information about a shooting last month. Officers tell us the two women that are on your screen were witnesses to or know the man who shot someone at a Valero near Hebner and that Hebner or Hebner near Eckert Road back on Wednesday, April 28th. Police telling us a man was talking to the two women before and after shooting someone at the gas pumps. All three ran across the street to a nearby apartment complex. The shooter now facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. So if you have any information that can help in the investigation, please call police, call Crime Stoppers. That number 210-224-STOP. Well, meanwhile, Converse police are working to figure out who's responsible for the death of 36-year-old James Feedy. Officers say the Uber driver, the Uber Eats driver, was making deliveries on Wednesday when he crashed on Loop 1604 in Greytown Road. He was taken to the hospital for what was believed to be crash injuries. However, police say the medical staff discovered he also had a gunshot wound to the torso. Police found a gunshot the outside of his vehicle, but they have not determined if his cause of death was related to injuries from the crash or the gunshot. The case remains under investigation. Anyone with information that could lead to an arrest is asked to call Converse PD at 210-658-2322.
Now to the latest at the Freeman Coliseum. Remember, it is a 60-day contract that turned Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall into a shelter for migrant children. Well, many of those children give themselves up to Border Patrol in hopes of seeking asylum. Earlier this year, we actually saw a rise in unaccompanied children seeking help. So thousands were transported to facilities across the U.S., including right here at the Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall. The contract for the facility is set to end on May 30th, but it could wrap up much sooner. Health and Human Services says, quote, we anticipate that a majority of teens here will be unified with their sponsors before the end of May. If, however, there are teens who have not been with their sponsors, when it is time to close, they will be relocated to another facility in the Office of Refugee Resettlements Network, end quote. Well, earlier this week, HHS confirmed more than 1,400 teen boys still remain at the facility. Well, there are so many disasters that can be prevented by the use of a smoke alarm. So that is why KSAT and our community partners are teaming up once again for this year's Sound the Alarm event. Today from 9 a.m. until 4, a member of the San Antonio Fire Department will enter homes, install smoke alarms in the most appropriate rooms of your house. Red Cross volunteers will remain on your doorstep, providing you with fire safety education, help you to build a fire escape plan. The goal of this event is to make 150 homes safer here in our community. For more information, if you're interested, just visit soundthealarm.org. And happening today, a world debut in San Antonio. Starting this morning, the San Antonio Botanical Garden will welcome visitors to their newest exhibit, immersing them in a historical, cultural, and colorful Mexican oasis. This is really cool. The exhibit Frida Kahlo Oasis brings the iconic Casa Azul green landscape and Kahlo's art to the San Antonio Botanical Garden to learn more about the artist's life and her inspiration. That's right. Alicia Brad joining us live from the garden with a sneak peek. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, really, we've been waiting for this for a long time. It took a team of experts here from San Antonio, but also the actual family of Frida Kahlo was involved in making this Frida Kahlo oasis come to life. So everything is just a replica of the intimate universe of the great Frida Kahlo. So no need to go to Mexico City, to the city of Coyacan. You can come here to the San Antonio Botanical Garden and learn more about the blue house, La Casa Azul. So obviously, the name of the home comes from this beautiful color, but but if you know anything about the great Frida Kahlo, well, you know that this Mexican artist had a deep love for her country and with that, a deep connection with Mexican native vegetation and the natural world. And you can really feel that here, too. So take a look at all the native plants. Everything has just been taken into account, the details from her actual home in Mexico. So over here on this corner, a very special one. This is a replica, can you believe it, of her actual desk that is in the Casa Azul in Guayacan. Look at this. It's just every single detail. So later on today on GMSA, we're going to be talking to the experts here at the San Antonio Bot Botanical Garden who may help make this happen. And they're going to walk us through the process, tell us more about what it took to get all these details right. And that way they could bring La Casa Azul, the blue house here to San Antonio. So this is very special, a lot of history, a lot of culture, and it really once again puts Mexico on the map. So again, we'll be here sticking along all morning long with the details. Reporting live from the Frida Kahlo Oasis, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. We'll check in, in just a little bit. 808, 71 degrees out. Well, have you ever noticed toilet paper prices are on the rise? Whoa, still ahead on GMSA, why experts say it's becoming more expensive and why wood is also involved. Mm. Plus, Mother's Day is tomorrow, so you might be looking to get a nice high-tech gift for the moms out there. Coming up next, we are checking out the top tech gifts almost every mom can use. 71 degrees at 809 this morning. Those clouds kind of still hanging around, but Sarah Spivey says we should see the sun at some point later today. She'll have our full forecast when we come back. Well, weather. The mom in your life is working from home or has three jobs. It's a good bet she's stressed at some point. But some of this year's tech gifts can make things a little bit easier, a little more enjoyable, and give your mom a smart upgrade. So take a look. According to PC Magazine, if mom likes to take time to read, but you know, doesn't have a lot of shelf space, check out the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. Now, this simple Kindle Riedel holds thousands of books, 
Still one of the best e-readers out there. You can typically pick it up for Amazon from Amazon for $100. I'm still into the whole, you know, reading from an actual book, but that's just me. But that one, the paper white, you mm -hmm. can use it poolside because oh. the sun doesn't affect the screen, which I like that. Whoa. So next up, it's usually kind of faux pas to give mom something like an iron or some other appliances like a vacuum for a gift. PSA, don't do it. That's unless <laughs> it's a robot vacuum and she doesn't have to do any work. So the latest line of Roombas are becoming more affordable and can mm -hmm. save mom a little time around the house starting at $199. That's still really expensive. The Roomba 675 is iRobot's least expensive robot vacuum. It has Wi-Fi and gives you control via an app along with scheduling in addition to great cleaning abilities. I have I hear good reviews on one. Do you have a Roomba? No, and I want one so oh. bad. It just $199 is expensive. Yeah. All right, finally, if mom loses things easily like wallet or keys, you can get her a Bluetooth tracker. So there's the brand new AirTag well, the new AirTags from Apple, but there's a lot more low budget alternatives like the ones from Tile. These compact devices can attach things like remotes, wallets, keys, phones, and they range from $29 to $70. For more Mother's Day gift ideas, just head to ksat.com. Have you guys seen the, just, uh, the Tile things? I want to say I have one. Mm -hmm. It's not just moms yeah. that lose things, <laughs> I lose things, dads. things all the time. I lose and things too, but it's all of us. Because right. dads, they do the same thing. So Father's Day gifts as well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the weather will be a little bit muggy this weekend for Mother's Day, but we are going to at least see a little sun. Right now, though, I'm showing you the visible satellite imagery. It's fairly cloudy out there temporarily uh, as we start the day, but these clouds are going to be giving way to sun. In fact, on the south side of Bear County here, you can see there is a little bit of clearing. Uh, it, and so we'll have a mostly cloudy, cloudy, mostly cloudy morning, but by the lunch hour will really start to see the sun peak out and then it'll be a sunny afternoon. Meanwhile, temperatures this morning pretty mild. It's 70 degrees at Bulverde, 72 in New Braunfels, 67 in Bandera, 65 in Lost Maples, 71 in Divine and at Simpson, 73 in Pleasanton, 71 officially at the airport. Again, these clouds are going to give way very quickly to sun. Here's the future cast right at around noon. We could still have a few clouds out there, but into the afternoon it's going to be pretty sunny. Now, one thing to note is you can see that there are some uh, showers and storms that will potentially develop off of the uh, Sierra Madres. They're just not going to make it to us today, and it'll be a sunny and toasty day. This is a look at the future cast for high temperatures today. It'll be very warm out for our counties out west toward Yavali, uh, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, Carrizo Springs. High temperatures well into the 90s there, close to 100 in Laredo. Meanwhile, along that uh, I-35 corridor, from San Antonio northward, close to 90 degrees, and then in the upper 80s in Kerrville. So here's how the forecast shakes because of the high humidity today with dew points in the upper 60s out there and into the afternoon in the upper 60s. We're going to have those high temperatures near 90 degrees, but it'll feel a few degrees warmer than that because of the higher uh, humidity. So look out for a heat index value this afternoon, especially around San Antonio. Winds right now from the south southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour but throughout the day today, they're going to pick up and be pretty breezy. We could see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour in the humidity uh, will continue to rise into tomorrow as well. So still cloudy at 10 and muggy 76 at 10 around noon. That's when we'll start to see skies clear 89 for the high warm muggy with gusts up to 25 miles per hour and a breezy and mild evening on deck for us. Let's take you through the future cast. It's going to be pretty busy week as far as rain is concerned. Let's start with tomorrow though. Tomorrow, Mother's Day, we're going to wake up right near 73 degrees. There could be a couple of isolated streamer showers right at around daybreak. Once again, we'll start off with clouds and in the afternoon, we'll have some sun. One thing I want to note, though, about the afternoon is we're going to be pretty close to that West Texas dry line, uh, and there is going to be a 10% chance for a stray pop-up storm. 10%, not a great chance. The chance is there, though, but it is still going to be just in general a very toasty and warm Mother's Day with sunshine in the afternoon. Much better rain chances start late Friday afternoon as a cool front is going to sag around San Antonio Monday afternoon, especially on Tuesday. We're going to have a good chance for some rain and some storms, and then we'll see some rain linger into Wednesday as well. Now, 
Given the time of year it is, we are going to have to watch out for the potential for some strong to severe storms Monday afternoon through Wednesday and have to monitor for some heavy rain. We've seen a good amount of rains in the last week or so, and so we'll be watching out for that potential as well. Temperatures are going to take a tumble behind that front, and with all the rain and clouds, we'll be in the 70s for highs on Tuesday and on Wednesday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Just about 818, 71 degrees out. Well, this is terrifying. Billions of buzzing oh God, are, are are about to emerge from the ground. Still ahead, where they are digging out from, and a fun but cringy fact you may not know. Yeah, the cicadas are terrifying. They're really ugly. Um, thousands of jobs opening up for those in need. After the break, details on a major restaurant chain in need of employees. Take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, two, fireball one. Daily four, eight, two, two, eight, fireball seven. And your cash five, six, 11, 24, 25, 34. Mega millions. Do you have your ticket out? I need to go get my ticket. I need to check. <laughs> All right. Five, 10, 19, 21, 50. Big number 10. Mega power four. Good luck. We'll be right back. In your consumer news this morning, Kentucky Fried Chicken says it needs thousands of more workers. The fried chicken chain wants to hire 20,000 people to fill positions at its restaurants across the nation. The open positions will be both full time and part time. KFC has relaunched a career site for those looking to apply for a job. Just go to jobs.kfc.com. All right, and here's something you might have noticed. Toilet paper getting more expensive, and that is because wood pulp is getting more expensive. That's what toilet paper is made of. Now, an industry an analyst says the monthly pulp price increases that we're seeing are unprecedented. Now, pulp prices rising for a variety of reasons, including global shipping delays and a post-COVID recovery in China. China, the world's biggest pulp buyer. This has not been a good year and a half for toilet paper. <laughs> there you go. Unless more for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 22, 72 degrees out. Well, coming up next, billions of wow. critters coming out of hiding after almost 17 years. It mm. sounds like a horror film. Details on where the Brood 10 is emerging from. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. <laughs> we have a Stephen King novel to bring you. <laughs> so, you've probably heard of them before. They're cicadas, and they are re-emerging by the Billions in just the next few days. Ooh, okay, with the roar of to rival a passing jet, the cicadas or chichadas, however you want to say it here in South Texas, are on the move. A remarkable bunch called the Brood 10. Mm. So this particular strain emerges in the mid-Atlantic in a few Midwest states living underground on tree roots, counting the seasonal cycles of those trees and coming into the light only once every 17 years. In busy areas, a million and a half, a million and a half, yes, I said that number right, could appear per acre. <laughs> The even crazier part is, is that they are edible. As you just saw there. And there are recipes online. So huh. one way to get this under control, you can eat them if you can stomach it. Okay. But Sarah um, Spivey says that we don't have to worry about, about that here. About that brood here. Yes. You know, every now and then you'll hear cicadas mm. here in San Antonio. But that brood, again, Midwest and uh, some of the areas near Tennessee. I can't believe it's impressive that they're 17 years old. Yeah. Isn't that impressive? I would try them. You would I eat? used to collect them when I was a little girl. I had a of wagon course. full of the dried skin. Right. I thought the it producer was cool. wants us to stop. <laughs> 827, 72 degrees out. We'll still ahead in our next half hour. Some public pools in San Antonio are opening up for the season. Details on what you need to what you need before you start swimming. Plus, critics are going after President Joe Biden after the latest jobs report. What he has to say about the latest news. Good morning, world travelers, explorers, art connoisseurs. Do you recognize this exact shade of blue? I'll give you a hint, Mexico. Just ahead on GMSA, all the details on the new exhibit here at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 831 this morning, May 8th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yesterday, we were spoiled, sun was out, was low beautiful. humidity. 
Chef's kiss day. Chef's kiss, Sarah Spivey. I just couldn't get enough of that we're gonna low take humidity. That chef's kiss back. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're going to talk about higher humidity today. But hey, it's not all bad news. We're still going to see the sun today and tomorrow as well for Mother's Day. We won't have to worry about widespread rain this weekend either. Uh, I want to take a look outside uh, in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at the pollen count we just got in. Molds are higher. They're moderate at 690. That is up a little bit from yesterday. Uh, so a little bit higher on the mold count. Not as bad as it could be, but still not ideal. Grass and pecan are low. Now this weekend is going to be pretty nice. It'll be muggy. It'll be hot. It'll be humid. But at least we again, we won't have to deal with widespread rain this weekend. Uh, today, we are cloudy now, but we're going to see gradual clearing. It'll be close to 90 degrees tomorrow. Humid, a 10% chance for a stray storm, but as I mentioned, better rain chances in the week ahead. This is last week's drought monitor. You can see just how bad the drought was. Boom, we've seen a lot of beneficial rain, now only moderate drought in the uh, San Antonio area, and we have the opportunity to see more rain early next week into the middle of the week. So coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about that. And of course, the rest of your Mother's Day weekend, Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, in your latest news, a rise in youth homelessness in San Antonio has a city implementing a new plan to address the situation. A five year strategic plan is now in place in partnership with Haven for Hope and the Thrive Youth Center. It targets those between the ages of 18 and 24, which makes up an entire community of those without a home here in San Antonio. The Department of Human Services is scheduled to provide an update on the plan next week. We're also expecting an update from the South Alamo Regional Alliance for the Homeless. Now to the latest in the pandemic here at home. Let's take a look at the latest numbers. 113 new cases of the virus reported and two more people have died in the last 24 hours. Taking a look at our local hospitals, 220 COVID patients, 73 in the ICU, 41 are in ventilators. Now when it comes to the vaccine rollout here at home, more than 900,000 people receiving their first COVID vaccine dose. And get this, almost 630,000 people are fully vaccinated across Bear County. The CDC director says she expects Pfizer to get FDA authorization to vaccinate 12 to 15 year olds on Wednesday. Pfizer now also planning to seek full approval from the FDA rather than just the emergency authorization that we've been operating under. And turning to the economy, President Biden on the defensive after a new jobs report shows America's higher hiring numbers are falling way below expectations. Well, critics are now asking if President Biden's nearly $2 trillion American rescue plan is worth it. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has more. Yeah, these disappointing job numbers really a sign of just how far the economy has to go to recover from the losses from this pandemic. Only about 266,000 jobs added in April. That is far less than half of the jobs added in March. The forecast, like you said, just way off. Unemployment actually seems to have ticked up. There were jobs added in leisure and hospitality industries hit so hard this last year, but there were losses in temporary help services like couriers and messengers. The news definitely put the White House on the defensive yesterday. President Biden and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen both said that they expected the road to recovery to be bumpy, but Republicans blasting the president. Some Republican governors and the Chamber of Commerce arguing specifically that the additional $300 a week in federal unemployment benefits, those benefits put in place by Democrats through September, they're arguing that those benefits are maybe keeping people from seeking work. Uh, so far, Democrats are really balking at this idea, though. They say there just isn't data to back it up, that there are still millions of Americans looking for work. They argue, if anything, this demonstrates a need for their policy proposals, things like paid family leave and medical leave, funding for child care and senior care. They argue that millions of Americans, especially women, had to leave the workforce this last year just overburdened with caregiving responsibilities. That was Mary Alice Parks reporting at the White House, a nonprofit bringing the essence of one of Mexico's most iconic landmarks to the Alamo City. Frida Kahlo's iconic Casa Azul was replicated in the garden's newest exhibit, 
Frida Kahlo Oasis. This is really cool. The exhibit promises visitors an immersive historical and cultural experience without having to travel too far. Our Alicia Bodetta is live from the San Antonio Botanical Garden with more on the debut of this oasis. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, already members of the San Antonio Botanical Garden have been walking around really enjoying this Frida Kahlo Oasis. It opens to the general public in about 30 minutes, and you really have until November 2nd, but there's definitely definitely no time to waste because there's lots to see. We're live with Andrew LeBay, director of the horticulture here at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Tell me what's the connection with the plants, right? We see so many, but the connection between here, the garden, and then in, in Mexico, in La Casa Azul. Oh, it's the love of gardening, the love of nature and plants. That's really what, I mean, we had so much fun doing this, this uh, exhibit uh, and celebrating the life of Frida Kahlo, the life and work, and, and connecting to her through her love of gardening and plants. We started by just researching thoroughly her artwork, all the plants that she drew and that she uh, had in her artwork, all the plants she had in her garden, and then also her love of native Mexican plants. And so that was our guide to uh, creating these lush, beautiful gardens. And then one of the cool things that you'll see are actually the lava rocks. Those are also from Mexico. So they've really paid a lot of attention to the detail. But you also tell me that there are some um, links here with Diego Rivera because, of course, we can't really separate Frida Kahlo from her husband, her panzón. Absolutely. They were both, uh, you know, a part of constructing the garden. Uh, so he had, of course, a large art collection. He displayed this in, in the garden. Um, he, was, of course, was famous for his paintings of the calla lilies. And so we brought those in around this beautiful uh, pond here. There's some small ones. We have some larger ones that will grow and become beautiful as the, as the summer progresses. And we also were very playful and brought in a nice uh, native plant of Texas, the frog fruit, uh, because this kind of uh, harks back to a name that Frida called uh, Diego as is Toad. Andrew, thank you so much. So we're going to have a lot of information coming up on GMSA, all our newscasts. This is just something so special. So again, it opens today, debuts to the public at 9 a.m. And then you'll have until November 2nd to come take your pictures and really learn more about Frida Kahlo. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says San Antonio continues to have a critically low blood supply and needs 600 blood donors a day to rebuild it. So to reach that goal, there will be blood drives at HEB locations around today and tomorrow. Today, you can go to the HEB on Bandera and Loop 1604 or to, uh, from, to, from 2 to 11 and Petrenko from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tomorrow, the location on Bulverde and Loop 1604 will be running from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Those who donate will get gift cards and rewards on the spot. For more information, visit SouthTexasBlood.org slash H-E-B. And just a reminder that the city plans to open six outdoor pools starting today. We have a list of those locations up on your screen right now. The pools at Woodlawn, Southside Lions, Heritage, and Lady Bird Johnson will open Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. They will also be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And the San Pedro Springs and John F. Kennedy pools will only be open on Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 8 p.m. In order to limit capacity, pre-registration will be required along with COVID-19 screenings. We have a full list of protocols right now on KSAT.com. It's 840 and 72 degrees. From struggling with addictions to crystal meth to turning their lives around, still ahead, one local family shares how the Salvation Army is helping them get a fresh start on life. And coming up next, it is Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats, and David Elder is talking tamales. You're not going to want to miss it. Take a look outside with live cam. This cloud's really still hanging around. 72 degrees at 840 this morning. Sarah Spivey has our full weekend forecast when we come back. Years ago, you started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. Tell me about that experience. Oh, you're, you're I'm crying. <laughs> Before.
Before the first restaurant opened in South McAllen in 1998, Delia made tamales and sold them to neighbors and friends to provide for her family. <laughs> it was very, my sister and I, she's the one to, to start to teach me to do the tamales. We started with a five pounds of masa and we sell it around the house and the profit that we have is to 250 for each one. The tamales Delia was making outgrew the holiday demand and expanded into a year-round business. Is this recipe from um, an aunt, uh, your mother, a grandmother? Like, where did the recipe come from? From my mother and her uh, uh, mother-in-law. Oh, wow, okay. And yes. so her mother-in-law? Yes. Oh, wow. Did your mother or your mother's mother-in-law, did they get to see all of this? No. All right. Turn to what? Yesterday we were spoiled. Is it going to continue through wow. the weekend? That was a really quick transition yeah. that we just did. There. That's a crane um, oh. in the foreground there. That is not a meteorological phenomena. So don't worry about that. <laughs> it is pretty cool to see. And you know what? For most of the construction workers today, the weather should be okay. Just a little humid. A little humid out there, but we don't need to worry about any rain. Now, in the background, if you can look past the crane, you can see that there are peaks of sunshine with this within this cloud deck, but it is still fairly cloudy at 71 degrees outside, and humidity is high. Dew points are in the upper 60s, and so humidity is at 87%. The high humidity is going to be with us all weekend long. Today in the afternoon, low 60s for the dew point. You'll still feel it. You'll notice the mugginess. But overnight, dew points are going to rise into the 70s, and that's where they're going to hang out for the day tomorrow for Mother's Day. Mother's Day is going to be noticeably humid, oppressively humid. We're going to have heat index values tomorrow in the upper 90s for Mother's Day. So a very toasty Mother's Day ahead for us. Uh, today will be warm, too, just not quite as hot. 71 degrees at the airport. The last couple of mornings, we've been enjoying mornings in the 50s. And not the case this morning. It's mild. 72 at JBSA Randolph. 75 in Pleasanton, 70 in Seguin, 71 in Canyon Lake, and it's still in the upper 60s in Kerrville and in Bandera. As I mentioned, it's cloudy out there right now. Watch what happens, though, to the clouds. A few will hang around around lunch, but after lunch, we're going to see nothing but sunshine out there. A couple of isolated uh, storms are possible to the west of Val Verde County, but here in San Antonio, we're going to enjoy some sunshine. And as I mentioned, it, it is going to be noticeably muggy. The heat index will be a couple of degrees warmer than what the thermometer actually reads. So around San Antonio, it'll feel like it's in the low 90s this afternoon. 100 degrees, though, feeling like down in Laredo. Now today, it'll still be cloudy at 10, 76 degrees. Right around noon, that's when we're going to see those skies clear. 85 at 289 for the high temperature. Mostly sunny skies this afternoon. It's also going to be breezy. Winds will be from the south at 10 to 20 with gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. That's what's going to keep our humidity high too. those south southerly winds uh, coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. Sun will set at 815 and it'll be a mild evening. Now, here's our weather setup for the first part of the week here. We've got a cold front to our north, a dry line to our west. By tomorrow morning, Mother's Day morning, we are going to have a couple of streamer showers out there. Uh, one or two uh, right at around dawn. It'll be cloudy at 73 degrees, but much like today, our skies are going to quickly clear. And then in the afternoon, we'll be toasty, 93 tomorrow with a heat index likely in the upper 90s. Because of our proximity to this dry line, I am going to include a 10% chance for a stray storm, an unlikely chance but the chance is still there. Much better rain chances starting mo late Monday afternoon as the front approaches. Again on Tuesday, we're going to have some widespread rain on Tuesday and then lingering into Wednesday. We could see potentially another inch to two inches of rain through Thursday, which again is going to give us a little bit of a pause for the potential for heavy rain starting late Monday afternoon through Wednesday. And of course, because it's this time of year, we're also going to be looking out for the possibility for strong to severe storms too. Uh, temperatures are going to take a tumble back down into the 70s and low 80s by the end of the week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 848, 72 degrees out.
Well, a couple went from being addicted to crystal meth to getting clean for their two children and moved across the country for a fresh start. Coming up on GMSA, we introduce you to that family and how the Salvation Army is here in San Antonio, how their family emergency shelter is helping them get back on their feet. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. The Salvation Army in San Antonio has been helping shelter South Texas families since 1889. And I was able to speak with one family staying at their emergency shelter who has gone from struggling with addictions to crystal meth to turning their lives around. They tell me how the Salvation Army is helping them get a fresh start on life. It, it's, it's a, it's a uh, feeling of just complete joy. Kristen Gamino and her husband Robert Zeller have come so far. They were living in Fresno, California and struggled with addictions to crystal meth and alcohol. But after they had their first son, they knew they had to change and get out. Well, we, we did struggle with addiction and our history there with that um, and having kids just wasn't going to be acceptable. So we wanted to up and start a new beginning elsewhere. Robert ended up getting a job as a granite fabricator here, but could only afford to live at an extended stay. Kristen says it became too expensive and the environment was difficult. So she called the Salvation Army. I came across Salvation Army. And within that day that I looked, I called and they said, well, come on in. Her and her husband have been staying in this dorm room with their two children, four-year-old Akaius and two-year-old Kaden since January. She is five months pregnant with her first girl and hopes they will be able to save enough money to get out by September before her baby is born. You know, this is the happiest that I can honestly say that I've ever been in my life, being here with all of this opportunity and being away from where such ugly used, you know, was, where we were once we were living. And being away from that has just been such a blessing. She says because of the programs, assistance, meals, and warm beds they have received at the Salvation Army's family shelter, she knows this is it. Her family will finally have their fresh start. You know, that, that happiness is something that I want to hold on to and I don't want to let go anymore. I've come so far and been given all of this opportunity already as it is, and we're just beginning. Hi, hey, babe. Kristen wants other struggling people to know that you shouldn't be ashamed to reach out to shelters or programs like the Salvation Army because you never know how much it can help. Take that helping hand because without you doing making that jump and that step, you have no idea of how far it can take you. And this next week is National Salvation Army Week, and KSAT has partnered up with Salvation Army for our KSAT community event where they're going to be having a phone bank trying to raise money for the Salvation Army. They're trying to raise $250,000. Go to ksatcommunity.com. You can find all that information. All right, time now is 8.55, 72 degrees out. Well, getting into the fiesta spirit at home, just mm. ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you about the porch parade contest and how you can apply. Well, since there will not be a Battle of Flowers parade or Fiesta Flambeau parade this year, San Antonio is having a porch parade. The virtual event is a citywide decorating competition for home schools and businesses. The event runs from April 23rd to May 24th. Right now on KSAT.com, you can submit your decorations, your photos of your house to enter to win prizes and Fiesta bragging rights. Seven winners will be announced on Friday, June 18th during KSAT's Fiesta special. All right, time now is. It's just about 858, 72 degrees out. Our next half hour, what a survey from the National Retail Federation is saying about the average people and how what they're spending on Mother's Day items this year. Mm. Plus, large warehouses now required to drastically cut their diesel emissions in Southern California. We have the details next. Well, new this morning, police and crime stoppers asking for your help trying to find a shooting suspect. We have the latest from police and what you need to look out for. And did you play the lottery? I did. We'll tell you if there was a Mega Millions winner. Well, you showed up to work today, so. I didn't <laughs> win. Get a live <laughs> look out there. 72 degrees to start your Sunday morning. Saturday morning. Woo, I'm already jumping to Mother's Day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full Mother's Day forecast in just a minute. What are you doing over there? These are my lottery tickets. Uh, <laughs> I actually got them out of my bag to check and scan them on the app. Didn't win. <laughs> All right. Well, either way, good morning. It is 9.01 this morning. I'm saying the wrong day of the week. You're checking your lottery tickets. It's a great start to good morning. It's San a Antonio. good start. And Sarah, I know there's some clouds hanging around, but they're going to 
they're going to clear out soon. They are, you know, we're going to have a pretty sunny afternoon after this cloudy start, but these clouds really are indicative of the humidity that's increased overnight for us. Uh, now take a look at the visible satellite. I love this this picture because it's literally from a satellite looking down from space and you can see almost every individual cloud. We've got some cumulus clouds out near Kendall County right now, so plenty of sunshine uh, behind those clouds in Kendall County near Sisterdale here in Bear County pretty locked into the cloud cover, but on the southwest side of town uh, right near Highway 90, we're starting to see some clearing uh, and we're going to see these clouds clear out pretty quickly. Probably by noon, we'll be looking at partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies, uh, but again, it's pretty humid outside. You can feel the mugginess out there and we're starting off a lot warmer than the last couple of mornings. It's 73 degrees at the airport, 76 at Pleasanton, 78 in Catula, 74 in Del Rio. It's 66 in Rock Springs and still in the 60s in Kerrville as well. But in the past 24 hours, we've seen dew points really rise. In fact, a dew point change of a generally about 10 to 15 degrees. And again, you can feel that humidity today. Here's how the forecast shakes out for your Saturday. Uh, still pretty cloudy at 10, but again, right around noon, that's when skies are going to clear for the majority of us. In the afternoon, it'll be mostly sunny, warm and muggy, a high temperature near 90, but feeling a couple of degrees warmer than that uh, because of the higher humidity. South winds at 10 to 20, gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. The weather looks pretty good. We do have a chance for rain, though, in the forecast uh, over the next couple of days, so I'll show you a look ahead at when we can expect to see rain in San Antonio. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help finding two women who they say may have information about a shooting that happened last month. It happened at the Volero on Hebner near Eckerd Road on Wednesday, April 28th. Officers say a man was talking to the two women before and after shooting someone at the gas pumps. Police say all three ran to a nearby apartment complex. The shooter is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, call police 210-224-STOP. In your morning headlines, the Southern California Air Quality Board voting Friday to require large warehouses to drastically cut diesel emissions from the thousands of trucks that service them. Now, the new rule requires warehouses bigger than 100,000 square feet to reduce nitrogen and diesel pollutants. They can do that by using zero or near zero emission trucks and by using solar panels. The Air Quality Board says the new requirements are expected to reduce smog forming emissions from the warehouses by get this 10 to 15%. Well, no tickets matched all six numbers drawn in Friday's Mega Millions Lottery. That means that the jackpot grows to $396 million for Tuesday's drawing. For the cash option, that's $272.3 million. If there's a winner Tuesday, it would be the 13th largest jackpot in the game's history. Now, a group of players in Michigan actually won $1.5 billion back in January. That's the second largest jackpot in the game's history. All right, well, happening today, a replica of the iconic blue home near Mexico City where the artist Frida Kahlo was born and died is now making its debut right here in the Alamo City. Well, starting today, the San Antonio Botanical Garden will welcome visitors to their newest exhibit, Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo Oasis, that features the lush gardens and sculptures of animals that inspired Kahlo's art as well as her desk and easel. That's right, Elisa Barrera, join us live from the garden on more on what should people expect. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, so many details, you guys. We're not in Coyacan. We're in the San Antonio Botanical Garden, Calle Londres, at the Frida Kahlo Oasis. Come on in. This literally looks so much like it. I've actually been to Coyacan to look at the museum, and my goodness, this will take your breath away. So here, when you enter, you'll go through this trail that really just honors all the native plants uh, that really inspired a lot of Frida Kahlo's paintings. There's also some native plants to Texas, uh, but just so many things that will really just teach you more about her life, her inspiration, but not only the good, but also the bad. So here on this first wall, we actually see the autobiographic testimony of Frida Kahlo and Diego. And on the bottom there, it says, it talks about sus sufrimientos y sus alegrías. So also the, the sufferings, but also the joys uh, that they live through this house. So we mentioned the easel the replica of the easel and the replica of the desk. I want to make our way over there um, because this is just so special. 
In the next half hour, we'll actually be speaking to the CEO of the San Antonio Botanical Garden on how they made this happen. So just look at the attention to detail. I actually thought it was the real thing, but this is a replica. So everything from the dried flowers, we know that Frida Kahlo used those dried flowers as bookmarks in her books. Um, just look at her colors to the right hand side, even that pencil sharpener. So everything you see here is literally everything you will see at the real thing in Mexico City in the uh, municipality of Guayacan. And then over here we have the easel. So again, we're going to be going through all these details um, this morning, but there's just so much to see. Already the doors are open to the public and this exhibit of Frida Kahlo Oasis will be available until November 2nd. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. All right, time now is 9.07, 73 degrees home. We'll still ahead in our next half hour. We introduce you to soon-to-be graduate Joshua Martinez and his inspirational story in today's Great Graduate segment. And a pair of nine-year-old twins already making a difference in the San Antonio community. We have that story next. 73 degrees outside at 9.07. Sun's kind of starting to make its way over those clouds. Sarah Spivey will have our weekend forecast when we come back. Welcome back. Well, you can consider them some of the youngest philanthropists in San Antonio, but for these nine-year-olds, it's all about wagging tails and wet noses. Yes, our producer Alexis Page tells us what inspired a pair of twins to collect donations for the San Antonio Humane Society. When you donate, sometimes you don't get to meet who benefits from it. That's not the case for nine-year-old twins Jaden and Justice Perez. Since the age of four, the twins have been dropping off massive donations to the San Antonio Humane Society. Toys, food, treats, a lot of things. Colors, bowls. All items essential to the care of the animals at the shelter. They brought in dog beds, cat beds, food, treats, toys, just a wide selection that will go a long way in helping us provide the best care possible for our pets. That is like feeding them, I'm playing with them. It gives them like extra activities while they're waiting for their forever home. But how do they go about collecting donations as large as their living room? It's simple. Instead of asking for birthday gifts, they ask for donations. There's, we have a list of things and for our birthday we send, send them out to, and, yes. sometime, and we also buy things. It's a tradition that involves the whole family. And we usually take about a month to collect um, and then we lay out all the gifts at the end of the month for our big uh, picture just to show the growth that we've had each year. Jaden and Justice say they decided to start their own tradition all because of one person they both look up to. Our big sister Jordan, she inspired us. She was doing, she was sending her gifts to the uh, Children's Hospital. Hospital and we wanted to do something like that too but we since we love the animals, we wanted to do the Humane Society. This year marks Jordan's fifth year donating to the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. In fact, Case had covered Jordan's first donation back when she was just seven years old. The girl's mom, Sandra Pettis, says they are learning valuable life lessons by giving back. It makes me feel great it, uh, that they're uh, doing for others and uh, just showing kindness and uh, showing that it's not about us, but about others and always doing for others. Uh, so I'm proud mama for sure. And when asked how long they plan to keep up the birthday tradition, Jaded and Justice had this to say. I actually want to do it my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. No, so cute. So cute. Adorable. All right, switching gears a little bit. Mother's Day weekend, what should yeah. we expect? Well, we should expect fairly quiet weather this weekend. It will be hot and humid, but quiet nonetheless. It was just last week that we were dealing last weekend on Saturday that we were dealing with flash flooding in San Antonio. Well, that's not going to be the case today or tomorrow, uh, so we were, are going to enjoy a fairly quiet weekend. Now, one thing that I'm showing you right now is the visible satellite. You can see how these clouds are starting to break up already uh, around San Antonio, but out near Seguin, still dealing with a fairly thick cloud deck. It's out towards Seguin and there in the New Braunfels area that we are seeing some limited visibility because of a little bit of patchy fog, but the rest of us are enjoying nice visibility and just a mild morning temperatures this morning in the 70s already 73 at the airport 73 in Holotus 72 in Hondo 74 at Stinson 70 in Seguin and 74 already in New Braunfels 71 in Comfort and 70 in Bandera. The humidity is palpable. You can feel it. You can see it 
sometimes in the form of a haze on the horizon and in these clouds. But these clouds are going to go away pretty quickly uh, and into the afternoon we're going to have mostly sunny skies, but that means our temperatures will soar. Now out well to the west, west of Valverde County, there is the possibility today for a couple of storms, but around San Antonio it is going to be quiet and it's going to be toasty. 92 for the high in Hondo, 94 in Yavaldi, 97 in Catula, 98 in Laredo, 96 in Del Rio, and along this I-35 corridor here, right around 90 degrees toward New Braunfels, upper 80s in Kerrville. Uh, keep in mind, though, because of the humidity, we are going to have to deal with a little bit of a heat index value this afternoon. Humidity is on the rise because our winds are from the south and from the southeast. They're pretty stout right now, breezy at 10 to 15 miles per hour, but they're actually going to pick up throughout the day, and we will see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, especially in the evening hours. So here's today's forecast. Still pretty cloudy at 10, muggy 76, but skies are going to clear around the lunch hour. Warm and muggy, uh, 89 for San Antonio's high today, but again, feeling closer to 92, 93 because of the higher humidity. South winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25. Now, here's our forecast setup for the next several days. We're going to have the West Texas dry line right to our west and a cool front approaching from the north. Tomorrow morning in San Antonio and around the KSAT 12 viewing area, right around dawn for the start of Mother's Day, there is the potential for a couple of streamer showers, uh, but not really amounting to much. We'll be in the 70s for the morning. It'll be cloudy and much like today, we'll see skies clear and it'll be sunny and toasty in the afternoon, 93, but feeling like in the upper 90s because of the high humidity because of our proximity to the West Texas dry line. I cannot rule out a stray storm, but the chance for rain is only 10% tomorrow. Better chances for rain arrive Monday afternoon through Wednesday, Monday in the afternoon, late afternoon, evening hours. A cool front is going to be close to us, uh, sparking off a few showers and storms that will become more widespread on Tuesday when that front stalls to our south. And then we could see a few showers linger into Wednesday and storms linger into Wednesday as well. We could potentially see some heavy rain with uh, the chance for rain this week from again Monday night through Wednesday. And because of the time of year, we are also going to have to monitor for strong to severe weather as well. But don't worry, we'll keep you informed. If a strong or severe storm pops up, we send notifications right to your phone to keep you safe. Uh, but it does look like we're in for another opportunity to see some rain. And as you know, it gets dry in the summer. And even though we've seen quite a bit of rain, we'll take any bit that we can get in the month of May before the dry months of July and August and even September sometimes. I, I enjoy the ring. I'll take it. All right, Terrace Bobby, thank you so much. 917, 73 degrees out. Well, if you want to get kids to read, just give them a book to Aww. read to adorable animals. What is that? That story is ahead. And from mini horses to big winds, we are talking about the silver and black. They are back. We're going to explain. Look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, two, fireball one, daily four, eight, two, two, eight, fireball seven. And your cash five, six, 11, 24, 25, 34. Big one, Mega Millions, 5, 10, 19, 21, 50. Big number 10, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. We'll be right back. The drinks. This is something that became really popular during COVID, right? During 2020, and you guys have kept it on the menu. It's like little to-go margaritas, right? Yeah, we have the whole family. We've had the gallon, we have the half gallon, and this is our newest one. <laughs> little it's, baby, but that's our, a lot though. <laughs> yeah, it's our jumbo mini, we call it. It's 32 ounces. Uh, we sell that in $12.99 in the drive-thru. And David, go ahead and I'm going in. That. He's going in. Mmm. Mmm. That's the real deal. What I love the most about this, look, like, you go like that, you put it like this, you put the lid back on, you put it in the refrigerator, you get a little sip to go later, right? That's right, you're good to go for the whole day. All right, man. You know what you do when you come out here, you're gonna get a great experience, you're also gonna get delicious food, you're also gonna get a great deal. I wanna talk about Taco Tuesday right here. It's
in and get our uh, beef Norteño taco. You order two beef Norteño tacos, you're going to get a third one for free, right? So that's been really a good hit. And we've also teamed up our $2.99 margaritas to go on Taco Tuesday. There you go, Taco Tuesday. Time to go from Taco Tuesday to the Silver and Black. Spurs needed a win in Sacramento last night. The first game of a back-to-back -back after dropping five in a row. And here's the thing. We have good news to tell you. The Spurs won big 113-104. Now they are sitting in the 10 seed. So technically, this is a weird year. Usually you need to be top eight to make the postseason. This year, though, 7 to 10, you can work your way into the playoffs. So it's almost like the playoff into the playoff. Next game tonight, 9 o'clock, taking on the Portland Trailblazers in Oregon. So there you go. And good news for Spurs fans. Bad news for Zion Williamson and Pelicans fans. He broke his finger. He's not going to be playing. So the Spurs pretty much secure at least a semi-postseason spot. Got all of that. There you go. Take a note. The more you know. 923, 73 degrees out. Well, two miniature therapy horses enjoy, enjoy story time with children from an elementary school in Denver. We have that mm. story next. Well, if you want to get your kids to read, bring them horses. <laughs> there you go. It's the easy trick we never thought of. That's what two mounted deputies are now doing in the Denver area. So take a look. Lieutenant Rich Anselmi, the author of a children's book, The Happy Police Horse, and Deputy Mateo Montoya Callas, the book's illustrator, they brought two miniature therapy horses. I love mini horses. And four normal size horses to a local elementary school. That book named The Happy Police Horse. <laughs> they let the children read to the animals. They say it gives kids motivation and confidence, Aww. not to mention a fun day with the horses. There you go. Any parent out there, the secret to teaching your kids how to read? Mini horses. Mini horses. Figured it out. 927, 73 degrees out. Well, a new controversial voting bill in Texas. Some are calling restrictive. Others say it's to help with the election security. The latest on this bill, that's still ahead. A new exhibit at the San Antonio Botanical Garden gives a rendition to the life and the art of Frida Kahlo. Just ahead on GMSA, the details on exactly how they made this possible. You can make it. <laughs> We made it. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for starting your day with us. It is 930 this morning, Saturday, May 8th. We're getting our steps in today. Yeah, it's starting on a high energy level. It's Love Saturday. It. It's Sound a little out of breath. Yeah, because I just <laughs> ran over here. Uh, Sarah Spivey, speaking of running, your favorite hobby. Is today a good running day? It is. I like that transition way smoother than you walking over there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are going to be able to see the sun eventually. It will be muggy, though. It will be humid today. That's the biggest thing you'll notice. Uh, if you're sensitive to mold in the air, you may also notice that in the pollen count, a mold has climbed. It is now moderate at 690, up a little bit from yesterday. Grass is low at 40 and pecan is low at 40. Now, looking outside, Side. We've got this crane, unfortunately, in our view, but we do have to see some of that construction being done. We are seeing those clouds clear uh, out there, and we'll be looking at a pretty sunny afternoon, but there are areas where the clouds are a little bit thicker at the moment. 73 degrees. It's south. Uh, winds are from the south-southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Dew point is really high right now, upper 60s, and so humidity is at 84%. You can feel the humidity. For this Mother's Day weekend, uh, you know, today's going to be Muggy and breezy with gradual clearing close to 90 degrees in the afternoon for Mother's Day tomorrow. Humid, downright humid uh, and toasty with a high temperature in the low 90s. It'll feel closer to the upper 90s, though, because of the humidity. There is also a small 10% chance for a stray storm, but we'll talk more about that in the upcoming forecast. Better rain chances Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. Now, a quick look at the trans guide and things look pretty nice if you're heading out early this Saturday. That's 281 at Grayson, 90 at 410. But as your traffic authority, Samuel, King will describe there are going to be a couple of trouble spots out there for construction this weekend. Well, first we'll start with some good news on the north side. The intersection of 281 and Stone Oak Parkway is set to reopen Saturday evening after all that construction up there. And the good news is drivers will be able to cross uh, down Stone Oak Parkway using uh, the frontage road, something you're not able to do right now. Those main lanes, as you know, have a reopen north of Stone Oak Parkway, and that's been a real benefit for drivers. But a lot of people have been asking about these ramps here at 604 and 281. Those are still 
still under construction. TxDOT says it's going to be a few more weeks yet, but just wait a little bit longer on that and those will be ready to go. Speaking of 1604, we do have some construction there this week too. some alternating lane closures between Stone Oak Parkway and 281 this weekend. They are doing some paving work and the construction continues on the west side in Loop 410 between Calabra and Marbach. For instance, some alternating lane closures as they do some work out there. Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, an argument between two men ends in a shooting. Now one person in the hospital, the other in police custody. To take a look, police tell us this all happened around 1030 last night. This is the parking lot of the Mediterranean Villa Apartments. That is the 1500 block of Jackson Keller. We are told that two men were fighting after one of them accused the other of vandalizing his vehicle. The accused person denied the accusation. Then he pulled out a gun and started shooting. That victim shot in the arm. He was actually found in the front of a home on Antler Drive, taken to University Hospital at last check in stable condition. The suspect, the suspected shooter arrested now facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Well, turning to the coronavirus numbers here in Bear County, city health officials report 113 new COVID-19 cases here at home and two more people have died from the virus. 220 COVID-19 patients are in local hospitals, 73 are in the ICU and 41 are on ventilators. Well, a new controversial voting bill in Texas, some on one side calling it restrictive, the other side saying it is necessary for voter integrity and this bill now one step closer to becoming law. ABC's Faith Abube has more from Washington. This bill has sparked so much controversy. The White House is weighing in, saying President Biden believes that these bills are making it harder for people to vote, not easier. The Texas House, Republican controlled, is now looking at this bill, has advanced this bill after hours and hours of debate on the House floor. The bill is now headed to the Republican controlled state Senate, where more changes could be made before final approval. As it stands now, among other things, there'll be changes to this bill that would prohibit state officials from mass mailing unsolicited ballot applications to voters, and it could also penalize voter assistance at the ballot box. This means Texas is now one step closer to joining nine other Republican controlled states that have enacted similar laws. We're talking Georgia and of course this week in Florida as well. Republicans say that these changes are meant to secure the vote and also instill confidence in the results. However, it's worth noting that these changes were happening on the heels of the 2020 elections. And while former President Trump Trump is still insisting that falsely that there was widespread voter fraud in the 2020 elections. Bottom line, nonpartisan analysts who have looked at these bills, studied these details, believe that they will in fact create barriers for disenfranchised and marginalized communities like blacks and minorities trying to vote. That was Faith and Bube reporting, and like she was talking about, right now the Texas legislature dealing with numerous bills that can have a huge impact on our community and on your family and friends. Bills ranging from the topics that Faith was just talking about, voting laws, permitless constitutional carry laws, even the possibility of sports gambling across the Lone Star State. There's a lot to explain, and that is why tomorrow on GMSA at 8 a.m., State Senator Roland Gutierrez is joining us live for our Leading Essay segment. We know you may have a lot of questions, so you can submit those questions right now to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then tune in tomorrow at 8 a.m. to hear the answers. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in just two minutes while well, installing a smoke alarm in your home can reduce your chances of dying in a home fire by half. That's why today the American Red Cross serving Central and South Texas in partnership with the San Antonio Fire Department will install free smoke alarms in San Antonio. It's happening now until 4 p.m. To schedule your appointment, just visit ksatcommunity.com. And also later today, remember to tune into Case at 12 to watch Global Citizens Vax Live, the concert to reunite the world. It's a special that aims to inspire vaccine confidence around the world and help get the vaccines. The concert hosted by Selena Gomez. There's going to be a big list of performances by known artists. The concert set to happen 7 p.m. And speaking of world debuts, a world debut happening today in San Antonio starting this morning, the San Antonio Botanical Garden welcoming visitors to their newest exhibit that immerses them in a historical, cultural and colorful Mexican oasis. The exhibit Frida Kahlo Oasis brings a iconic Casa Azul green landscape and Kahlo's art to San Antonio Botanical Garden to learn more about the artist's life and inspiration. Our Alicia Bedetta is live from the garden with a peek of what visitors will see. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Yeah, well, a slice of Guayacan has arrived here to the San Antonio Botanical Garden. And like y'all mentioned, so much color, so much history, but also so much accuracy to what you'll see in Guayacan. We have Sabina Carr, the CEO of the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Good morning. Good morning. I am so intrigued <laughs> to find out how is it possible to make this happen? What is the relationship with the family? I know, it's unbelievable, right? Well, I think that we have deep connections in San Antonio to Mexico City. So that was first and foremost, right? And the family just loved the idea, the concept that we brought them, and they're so proud of this. They were here at our opening the other night, and they just said, Frida would have loved your botanical garden, and she would have loved your exhibition. Good job, right? And so we were able to have access, because we also have the Frida Kahlo Museum support. Yeah. We were able to make an exact replica of Frida's desk. Now, obviously, we have it covered here because we're in plein air, you know, so we've got the um, all of her paint supplies. We have the toad that she affectionately called Diego, her husband. <laughs> and right in the center, you're going to find Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, which was the book they found on the day she died next to her bedstand. And there was a dried flower marking the page. So very bittersweet. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly what what this museum, right, at the Casa Azul is. It's, it's bittersweet. To the right over here, we have an easel. So yes. tell me about how special that replica of the easel is. So this is the easel that Nelson Rockefeller customized for her at the time in her life when she was more or less wheelchair bound and having trouble with mobility. So she could just wheel herself right up and start to paint really easily and have all her supplies in her studio next to her. Wow. They were very dear friends. That is so beautiful. Sabita, CEO of the San Antonio Botanical Garden, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. You guys, the Frida Kahlo exhibit open, uh, Frida Kahlo Oasis exhibit now open until November 2nd, but really you don't want to waste any time in getting here. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. 940, 73 degrees out. Well, the average money people spend on Mother's Day items, it's actually up this year, still ahead. We tell you how much it is according to the National Retail Federation. Plus, next on GMSA, we have our great graduate segment. We are going to introduce you to Joshua Martinez of Southside ISD. Take a look outside, 73 degrees. The sun's trying to peek out over those clouds. Sarah Spivey will let us know when it will come out today and have our Mother's Day forecast. Well, in our great graduate segment, we are highlighting students in and around San Antonio who are overcoming the seemingly impossible to thrive. That's right. Today we are introducing you to Joshua Martinez, a senior at Southside High School who has an inspirational story and is set to walk the graduation stage. Sometimes I didn't have a place to sleep. I didn't have food. This is Joshua Martinez. At a young age, at my younger teens, my mom was incarcerated. Um, so, you know, that kind of left me in, in the area I was at, um, you know, following, following, you know, the older kids that I saw in the hood. A soon to be Southside ISD grad whose journey to this table has been one filled with trials and tribulation. It took sleeping on the streets. It took, you know, sleeping on any, anywhere I could find, you know, anywhere I could lay my head at in peace. But he stayed persistent and never gave up. When he enrolled, he said, I know I'm behind, but if you, you know, tell me what I need to do to catch up and get me in the right classes and credit recovery, I'm willing to work for it. He made it through and is stronger because of what he had to do. It's taught me independence. It's taught me integrity. Um, it's taught me just to, in general, make the right moves. Joshua has a unique story, and it truly motivates those around him. He's definitely an inspiration for me. I mean, he is the reason I do what I do. These kids and them fulfilling their dream after everything. I mean, we think we have struggles, and then sometimes I hear these stories, and I don't know how academics are a priority. Now, Joshua says he hopes he can be an example for anyone willing to listen. Just because you're doing it by yourself, that doesn't mean you, you can't achieve it. You just have to see which path you have to take and make the right decisions. And his path is far from over. After school, I do, I do want to attend Palo Alto to, um, to major in mathematics. Well, Joshua tells us he wants to be an influence in the math world and work with kids. That's right. He says from the experiences that he went through, he wants to help children who have the same circumstances he did. So really an amazing story, triumph, tenacity. I mean, it really is just impressive. I love our great graduates. And Sarah, I know there's a lot of graduations taking place today. Will the weather comply? It will. You know, we're really not going to have to worry about rain today by any means. But 
we are starting to see these morning clouds, which were quite thick, start to break up a little bit. As you can see from the visible satellite imagery, you can see just about every individual cloud there. Really neat to see that cloud cover break up. Now it's still mostly cloudy, and in some spots it is overcast, like out near Seguin. Uh, but this is an indication that, again, we're going to be seeing these skies clear. Meanwhile, a little bit further to the south, you can see just how sunny it is for Cachula, for Laredo this morning. Now it is noticeably muggy out there. You step outside, you feel the humidity. The last couple of days we've had very low humidity, but dew points today will be in the 60s and even tomorrow dew points will be near 70 degrees pretty much all day, which is oppressively high humidity. This means that in the afternoons it's going to be toasty as is, but with the higher humidity, we are going to have to deal with heat index value this Mother's Day weekend. 76 right now in San Antonio at the airport, 74 in New Braunfels. We spent the last couple of mornings in the 50s. We're well above that now. 76 in Castroville, 73 at Rio Medina, 78 out in Pleasanton at 70 and Birdie Sage Airfield. Here's a look at the future cast again, starting off pretty cloudy, but by noon we'll be looking at a lot more sunshine than what we're seeing even right now, and that's going to be in a toasty afternoon into the afternoon. There could be a couple of showers or storms along the Sierra Madres there, but they just won't have enough uh, oomph to make it uh, east toward Del Rio or your Valley. It's going to be a sunny day for all of us, and with the higher humidity, here's what it's going to feel like in the afternoons in the low 90s. 90s around San Antonio, 95 Pleasanton, close to 100 in Del Rio. Uh, but just to give you an hour by hour forecast here, 76 at right now and cloudy, but by noon, that's when we'll see partly cloudy skies get up into the 80s, and in the afternoon, the high temperature will be 89. But again, it'll feel a little warmer than that. It's also going to be breezy today. South winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30, 25, 30 miles per hour, especially in the evening hours after the sun sets at 815. Those southerly winds are going to keep us humid and uh, begin to bring in some low level moisture that's going to act as an ingredient for rain in the week ahead. But first, let's talk about our setup for tomorrow. We're going to have the West Texas dry line just to our west tomorrow. We'll start off the day tomorrow with a couple of isolated streamer showers, not amounting to much. It really won't put a damper on the roads too much. Just a couple of streamer showers, cloudy and 73 for the start of Mother's Day. And then in the afternoon, much like today, sunny skies, 93 for the high tomorrow, but high humidity as well. Tomorrow, I will note there is a 10% chance for a stray storm off of this dry line here, uh, but the better rain chances really start late on Monday as a front approaches and continue throughout the day on Tuesday as that front stalls to our south and linger into Wednesday. But Tuesday looks like our best chance to see rain. Some of this could be heavy rain with one to two inches of rainfall possible through Thursday. And with it being the springtime, we have to look out for some of those spring like stronger to severe storms starting late Monday, lasting through Wednesday. Temperatures are going to take a dip too because of the added rain, the cool front and the cloud cover will only be in the 70s for highs Tuesday and Wednesday and even by Thursday and Friday only in the low 80s compared to the 90s like what we're dealing with right now Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 949, 73 degrees out. Well, NASA rocket launch will light up the sky this weekend. We have the details next. In your morning consumer news, according to a new survey, many older Americans have no plan to retire. That's right. Over 1,500 people between the ages of 60 and 75 years old participated in the American Advisors Group survey. 46% of the participants say they plan on working at least part-time during their quote-unquote retirement. 12% said they are working full-time and they don't plan to ever stop. The AAG says seniors were already working later in life to make ends meet before the coronavirus. And what you're looking at, well, we're a couple stories ahead. What you're looking at right now is a rocket from NASA. But we were going to talk about IBM saying they created, there we go, creating the world's smallest and most powerful microchip. The company introducing a two nanometer, very small chip earlier this week. The chip is about the size of a fingernail. Whoa. Oh, and it contains 50 billion transitors, each about the size, 
transistors, each about the size of two DNA strands. Whoa. It also has a 45% higher performance and uses 75% less energy than most seven nanometer chips. All right, experts say IBM's new microchip will lead to advances in areas like artificial intelligence and encryption. The chips expected to go into production as early as 2024. Well, tonight there will be a light show in the sky, but only for people in the eastern part of the U.S. Mm. That's thanks to the launching of the suborbital rocket to explore energy transport in space. Oh, so the rocket is going to be blasting off from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The mission called Kinet X includes the release of barium vapor forming two <laughs> Green violet <laughs> clouds that can be visible for about 30 seconds. Oh, this sounds like a. We're learning a lot this morning. I'm just laughing because I feel like I should have been able to read these up with all the science. Well, papers. then the spherical clouds will appear as mixture of green and violet for roughly another 30 seconds. Finally, the vapor clouds will take on a violet color. All right, now to a story that we can actually understand. All right, the National Retail Federation says Mother's Day spending is expected to be a total of $28 billion. That's up more than $1 billion from 2020. All right, so according to the group's annual survey, consumers are planning to spend on average $220. That's awesome. Nearly half of respondents say they are giving mom a special outing, brunch, or, you know, other activities, maybe a spa day, slightly up from 2020, but still below pre-pandemic levels. So there you go. And we want to see pictures of you celebrating with your mom. So you can send this to us on KSAT Connect. The link on your screen, that is ksat.com slash pins. Or you can also do it through the pin section of the weather app, their weather authority app. We might show some of those pictures tomorrow on GMSA at 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. So send your mom pics. That'd be a good little Mother's Day present. That's right. 956. 73 degrees out. Well, the line between work and rest blurs. When working from home, this makes it harder for people to get appropriate mm. rest. Tomorrow on GMSA, some tips you can follow to help you and your coworkers de stress.